Our next speaker is Prasenjit Singh. Um, welcome, Prasenjit. This is your first talk at our WTD India event, and we are really happy to have you. A mathematical models for technical storytelling. This is the title itself is really interesting. I'm curious to know what it is. This talk focuses on understanding what mathematical models are, study some examples, and then goes on to explore their usefulness in technical writing. It is meant for developers, technical writers, and scientific content creators, and aims at helping them simplify technical storytelling by implementing the mathematical model approach. Thank you for that talk, Prasenjit. Uh, Prasenjit works as an engineering manager and DevOps practitioner at Stars Play Dubai. He has been systems and DevOps engineer for over 15 years across the globe. He's also an instructor and subject matter expert for Coursera, where he teaches Linux, cloud, DevOps, and SRE. In addition, Prasenjit discusses technology and mathematics in his YouTube channel. Um, for those of you who are interested in learning more about it, please do subscribe to his channel. He has shared this link. Um, it's youtube.binpipe.org and connect with him on LinkedIn as well. Over to you, Prasenjit. Thank you. Thanks, Raji. Thanks, everyone. Uh, it's a nice opportunity for me to speak here. So uh, let me share my screen. And thanks, uh, Mansi. It was a great talk by you. And uh, I got to learn a lot about accessible documentation. I had no idea about this. And uh, I used a lot of flashy GIFs as well. <laughs> so I violated all the <laughs> rules. But next time, I'll be careful. But uh, let's get started with my, my topic for today. So it's about. Uh, like uh, as students of maths or students of science, we use a mathematical model approach to simplify things. So as technical writers, uh, I think this would help to uh, simplify technical documents and make it easier for uh, newcomers or uh, people who are uh, trying to understand what the document actually says, because technical documents are very important. They, they are even a part of the intellectual property that uh, comes across when you value a company. Uh, recently, I was a part of a, a due diligence exercise. And from there, I came to know like the uh, documents which technical writers produce for a company is IP. And this IP is used to value a company's technical product. So it's very important uh, for the business. And it is also important for uh, engineers like us, say I join a company today and I have no clue about the product. So this uh, documentation will tell me about the moving parts, how it works. So the way it is conveyed by the technical writer becomes very important even for engineers and even for the customers who are uh, getting onboarded into a product to learn and understand uh, and work on that product. So uh, I'll try to uh, explain like uh, some of my learnings and uh, what kind of technical documentation I find useful and easy and uh, how we can use mathematical models to uh, write uh, better and more uh, powerful technical documentation. Uh, so this is about me. And OK, so where are we headed? Uh, today, we will uh, discuss, uh, first try to understand what mathematical models are. And then uh, once we get an idea, we will try to uh, take those ideas and try to apply it on uh, our documentation, how we can make our technical documentation and storytelling more interesting and connect to the audience, because that is the, um, uh, that is the most important goal, that should be the most important goal of a technical writer to speak or connect to the audience because otherwise it just becomes another manual which you read and uh, try to make sense out of it. That should not be the case. It should tell the story of that product or the service offering, uh, technical service offering that it is speaking about. So first of all, what is a uh, mathematical model. 
Now, before we go and understand that, uh, let me tell you what a model is. We all know, say, say like when uh, a civil engineer or an architect is trying to build a monument or say, say you are going to build the Eiffel Tower. So what would be the exercise? One cannot just go in and start building it right from uh, the word go. So first of all, there, there would be a uh, there would be an engineering drawing. So that is a two-dimensional uh, representation of the Eiffel Tower that would be uh, built on the real world. Now this two-dimensional drawing will tell you about the length, breadth, height, and different other components, and then. Uh, even architects make a three-dimensional replica of the real thing before the real thing is built. So say the Eiffel Tower is 100 meters in high, so you would have a 100 centimeter replica of that real thing, just to see the stability, how it looks like, uh, and all that. And once uh, everyone is good with the model, then you build the real thing. So that makes uh, understanding the real things uh, easier and uh, in advance you can imagine how it would look like when you build the real thing. So similarly, uh, you can say like this is a re rehearsal of doing the real thing, okay? Uh, but there are situations where you have no room for rehearsal. So I'll come back to what a mathematical model is, but after this example, say we are launching a satellite or we are sending off a space probe uh, two days ago, we had this uh, perseverance reach, landing safely in Mars. So how do they do that? You have no room for rehearsal. You cannot send a replica to the space, place it in orbit and spend all the money there doing that exercise. You would rather have one chance to send the real thing out there. So uh, what happens in such cases? How do they rehearse? How do they understand what is going to happen and how do they uh, apply it? So in those cases, we use mathematics. So we uh, consider all the different parameters that control a certain uh, rocket's launch and placing it in orbit, different variables, like what should be the speed to escape the gravity of Earth, what should be the pressure, what should be the thrust, temperature, different kinds of parameters. We put them into equations, simplify those equations, solve it, and then we get uh, an idea of how to apply that uh, on the real world scenarios, okay? To uh, make it even more simpler, let me show you an example. You can see here, there's an equation like you can see this is a formula integration of a function okay this is called the Riemann sum uh, i'm not going to scare you with uh, too many of these equations but just to put the idea clear say someone asks you to uh, calculate the area under this curve now it is a difficult because this is a not a, um, a symmetric figure Okay, this curve can is undulating and it's it's uh, it's not symmetric, but we know how to uh, calculate areas of symmetric figures like rectangles, length multiplied by breadth. You can easily calculate it. So what we do is we break down this curve into small rectangles, and we uh, calculate the area of each of the rectangle, sum it all up and we get the area under the curve. But the smaller the rectangle is, like if you can um, create small and small and small rectangles, that would cover this undulating curve instead of having something outside the curve and giving a wrong um, information. So, so once you uh, calculate the area of all the rectangles and add it all up, you get this formula. So this formula is nothing but integrating or adding all the uh, areas of small rectangles and calculating the area under the curve. So here, this mathematical model of the formula makes it easy to understand that formula. If someone just write integration function x of dx, doesn't make sense. Let me run away from, uh, from this uh, maths class. So, but when it comes across explaining that it is nothing but a sum of 
multiple uh, rectangles that is uh, the, the area has to be calculated and added up smaller or thinner the rectangle more accurate so uh, so that's how more accurate you will get of the area of the curve so that's the Riemann sum so that that is uh, something that explains how you can convert an equation into a mathematical model now I'll uh, I will request you to hold this idea we'll come back to it when we understand how we are going to apply it and how does this idea make sense for technical writing all right so how does it work we have a real world problem that requires a real world solution and this real world problem cannot be rehearsed for some reason you cannot create a rep physical replica to do it so you create a maths problem or an equation make some assumptions then uh, you construct a, a mathematical model uh, to explain that problem and to work on it get the inferences or solutions and then apply it to the real world to solve that real world problem so that is how it works so these mathematical models can be represented in multiple ways one we discussed already as equations so you can uh, write it as equations and simplify it and more relevant to us as technical documenters we can uh, convert it into hierarchical diagrams like there could be uh, some situation where uh, there is a certain entity that controls some other entities and that in turn controls some other entities so these kind of ideas can be represented into hierarchical diagrams it's not only about illustrating the document we are writing it is about making the idea clear and what would be the appropriate mathematical model to explain that idea we can have pie charts uh, explaining distribution we can have flow charts um, added with the texts uh, for explaining the decision flow or uh, the workflow and uh, more recently uh, people use something called a graph database you can look at this uh, particular uh, uh, picture here you can understand the entity relationships between different things for example i work for a video streaming company so what we do when a certain user uh, logs into our application the user watches a movie and another user if he is uh, he has watched one movie of the same genre we recommend uh, him uh, another movie uh, of uh, that is watched by another user of the similar genre so we classify the users with the similar tastes into one category and we uh, recommend them them movies so these kind of uh, in these kind of uh, exercises we use graph databases and uh, in the documentations also we use graph databases to make people understand how different uh, relationships are mapped so and another mathematical models which is very common is venn diagrams where uh, you can understand the relationship between two different things what are the overlapping characteristics what are the uh, characteristics unique to each other so in these kind of scenarios always use uh, venn diagrams that makes uh, things visual not only illustrative, but to understand the idea. So that is another um, place where I would recommend uh, using mathematical models. And of course, the equation part we discussed already, like uh, we try to, whenever there is something, uh, some technical document which covers equations and uh, difficult things, like uh, things which are difficult for laymen to understand, we try to make it more, uh, uh, we should try to make it more uh, graphical and understandable. For example, we all know about the Pythagoras theorem we did in our school days, like this uh, hypotenuse, uh, the square of the hypotenuse should be equal to the square of this perpendicular and the base. But if I just tell you this as a formula, like, h square is equal to p square plus b square or something like that 
that's just something uh, which we have to keep in our mind as a rote learner. But if I tell you, just draw a square on the top of this hypotenuse, draw a square here, draw a square here, uh, calculate the area of this square and this square, and calculate the area of the bigger square, uh, you will see that adding up these two will lead to this. So that makes the thing committed to mind, makes it easier to understand. So that is what the idea is. Uh, try to simplify it with these kind of simplifications as well as with, uh, with some kind of a analogy or analogical storytelling. Like for example, a few days ago, I was uh, reading a, a document about Kubernetes and uh, Kubernetes is an orchestrator where, which you can use to deploy containers. Uh, nowadays, microservices and containers are very popular. So Kubernetes itself is a complex thing. So to understand it, it it's very difficult. So there was a technical document which explained it uh, as a big ocean. So the ocean represents the resources like CPU, memory, everything is filled in that ocean. Now big fishes, whales and sharks are bigger services running there. Small fishes are smaller services. So big uh, fishes will need more food. So they, they take up more resources, leaving less for the small fishes and things like that. So uh, an analogical story helps to, helps to connect to the user, makes the uh, difficult concept easier, and then you can introduce the uh, actual thing. Uh, but as a prelude, you can start with the analogy, uh, a mathematical model to make the documentation simpler to understand, interesting, and uh, it will create an impact. So how do technical writers benefit it allows them, uh, as I said, uh, to connect deeper. You just don't uh, stay, uh, become like an insect on the top of water uh, or just on the surface uh, and trying to explain it from there. You understand it better while trying to create an analogy or a model uh, and you dive deep, understand more so you can convey more uh, to your audience. It allows uh, better representations. It simplifies the topic, as I already said, and in the end creates uh, more impact. So what are the tools we can use here? So one tool I use a lot is Kumu, not very popular, but a very powerful one. You can go to this website, kumu.io, and uh, I'll also have planned to create a video on it and I'll put up uh, in my channel on sh or share in some future sessions here. So you can use this tool to make your documentation interactive. For example, uh, here, uh, this explains uh, uh, Python uh, documentation. Let me share you the real one. So this is a model about some, uh, about Python programming language. So here, uh, you first create this kind of a node entity relation diagram. How to do that? We can have it have another session. But uh, say I click on Python, and there you see what is about Python. Then you understand how nu numerical things are calculated in Python, what is a Python interpreter, and things which are directly related to Python. Now, if you click on object, you see what an object is, this is an incomplete, is just, a, uh, just for the demonstration that I did. So then object is connected to methods, types, functions, and so on. So related things are connected. And so that gives an idea of the uh, idea to the user, like uh, what is the flow and what are the related or dependent uh, things to this particular idea. So clicking on that node again gives you another uh, next thing uh, about uh, that, uh, the details about that particular thing. Also uh, having uh, like uh, demonstrating or storytelling um, as a way of uh, expressing it in a timeline manner also helps. Sometimes we, uh, uh, we are describing something which requires a time series, for example, uh, something happened at a particular moment and what happened, uh, say we are describing a process that is running in the cloud. So 
as soon as the application is launched, what happens? That description, and then down the time series, something else happened uh, five minutes down the line when this service was triggered. So this kind of things can be represented in time series as well, or as flowcharts. So so all these instruments can be used to make storytelling more powerful uh, from a technical writer's perspective. Similarly, there is another tool called uh, GeoGebra. I haven't covered it here, but... Um, Prasenjit, uh, I'm sorry, just wanted to flag. I, I think oh, I uh, we are running a little... <laughs> yeah, 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 sure, There's sure, no sure. pressure. Yeah, I'll just take five more minutes. Okay, so this is another tool, GeoGebra, which you can use for these kind of illustrations. Uh, this is a uh, open source tool as well. And, uh, and of course, uh, doodling and uh, using uh, animations also helps uh, to understand uh, complex technical things uh, and makes it easy. So it's all about uh, simplifying things. In mathematics, what we do, we take an equation, simplify it, arrive at one solution. So this is what we also should do with uh, technical writing. First, try to understand the concept ourselves, try to simplify it as far as it can be done. And uh, that will uh, allow us to speak more clearly and reach out to our audience. So that was all I had. Thanks a lot. And uh, I'm looking forward to Thank other you, sessions. This <laughs> wonderful, you. wonderful session about mathematical modeling. And I really wish uh, I had taken much more interest in mathematics during my schooling days to <laughs> appreciate this much more. But nonetheless, as you rightly mentioned, it definitely helps us in presenting our content better. I especially love the Python uh, documentation concept that you mentioned. And because um, we, are, we tend to be learning as linear, in a linear fashion, but your approach of having an integrated and a model approach is um, certainly out of the box approach to learning. Um, I am certainly going to explore that and I'm sure the rest of them have enjoyed that as well. And Thank we you. also look forward to many more sessions from you in the future. And we'll definitely, I will certainly subscribe to your YouTube channel to know more about the mathematical model. Very informative. Thank you.